to the workshop, ladies and gentlemen. It's fantastic to have you here as ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, stay there, stay in corner, I say. All right, welcome back to the workshop. It's a lovely day to work again on the faster for Scalagram. I hope you enjoy. Matt has some rough grinding prepared for you and some fiddling before we start fitting all the parts together. Enjoy! With the blade now heat cycled, I'm just going to do a little rough grinding on it before heat treat. Some people like to do uh, their fuller grinding before heat treat, it doesn't really matter to me. So I'm basically just going to true up the geometry a very little bit and then scuff the whole surface clean, hand it off to Ilya and we'll heat treat. In order to harden the blade, I heat it up to approximately 1450 to 1480 degrees and quench it in Parks 50 oil right here. The oil has to be a little bit preheated. After about 8 to 10 seconds inside the oil, I move on and clamp the blade between two boards, which will keep it straight. To help get an even heat, we first heat up the thickest part of the blade, which is the tang and shoulder and then flip the blade around to heat up the tip, which is the thinnest and will heat up much, much faster. Once the blade has been clamped between two 2x4s long enough, we then remove the blade and place it into heated oil for tempering. We have to do two cycles of this process in order to safely move on to the final grind. Alright, at this point our fashion blade has now been successfully heat treated and tempered. You can see that it stayed nice and true. The edge just has a very slight wander to it right here. So I'm just gonna have to make sure I take my time when I grind it, make sure I grind that edge back to the true center. And then after we do that, the complicated grinding starts, which is adding all the fullers that are characteristic of a Sicilian fashion blade.
So as I promised some of you in the comment section, I'm going to now show you the historical example of a falchion that we're basing ours off of, right here. Now you can see it has multiple fullers, uh, one big one up the main length of the blade, and then it splits into two fullers up towards the point. Also, this one's pretty unique, and it has little notches up here at the point. Those haven't been ground in yet on our falchion blade. So when I'm doing the fullering, I'm also gonna add in those notches. And much like I did, if you saw our vlog weeks and weeks ago, where I did a crazy blade breaker type blade, I'm gonna grind in those kind of details up here on the spine as well. First, I'm gonna take this blade up through the grits a little bit, and then we'll move on to establishing the fullers, just like the historical example. All right, with the rough grinding done, I'm now ready to start to move on to doing the fullering. You can see that I've drawn on some uh, guidelines on one side of the blade. Uh, it's gonna be a wide fuller that starts and stops. So a short one here, a wide one here, transitioning into two up here. I'm gonna do the wide fuller on this wheel. It's about a three, three and a half inch wheel. And then I'm gonna switch out and do the narrow fullers up by the point on this little guy here, which is about, I'd say, a one, one and a quarter wheel. Let's get started. This is the fun part. Neat, no fullers, notches first. So before we move on to grinding the fullers into our blade, we're gonna start by rough grinding the notches on the back of the blade. I'm gonna do that with a half inch narrow wheel. Just take my time and get those profiles set. If we did the fullers first, we take a chance of grinding too much material off and then not having enough to do the notches. So let's do this first. With the notches now ground in, we can finally move on to fullering the blade.
With the largest pullers now roughed in, we can now swap out to the smaller contact wheel to start grinding in the parallel pullers near the tip.
All right, side one is now roughed in. I'd say that went pretty darn awesome. A uh, few little complications I didn't really think about. And basically the first one was this little fuller. It looks really simple and easy to do. And it pretty much was. But usually when you have a fuller, you have a lot of room to work back and forth on your wheel. And just basically being just slightly wider than the wheel, that fuller created a little bit of wasping or like a bow tie action, a little wasting. Because naturally the edges of your contact wheel bite in more than the middle. So I got wider here and here than I did in the middle. So then I just kind of had to go at an angle and carefully feather that width back in on the center. No big deal. The uh, fullers at the tip went really well. So from here, I'll move on to roughing side two. I've said it once and I'm gonna say it again. One thing is absolutely essential in any grinding, but especially anything complicated like this, is that you have to go into it with a confident attitude. If you go into it and you're scared or tentative, you are definitely gonna mess it up. So whether you think you have the skill or not, if you're gonna attempt something like this, fake it till you make it, be confident, grind those babies in. All right, here we are, day two of moving on from rough grinding the fullers to polishing the fullers out. Currently, my larger radius fullers are polished to a 320 grit. Um, I now have the small wheel put back on the sander to polish out the fullers at the tip to a 320 grit. Now, when I say 320 grit, what I mean is how many bits of sand basically are within a square inch. So if I say 24 grit, it means there's only 24 in a square inch. If I say 320, there's much, much more. Uh, that's how we determine you know, the actual grit of a sandpaper. And the final grit that we're gonna end up with for the fullers is gonna be around 800, maybe 600. We'll see how it works. Now, when you're grinding fullers like this, I highly recommend skipping grits that you normally would never skip when you're doing a flat grind. It's really hard to see the grit as you change if you just move up in small increments. So I recommend using as fresh belts as possible and skipping grits that you normally wouldn't on a flat grind. So now let's move back to the narrow wheel and polish out our fullers here at the tip. We've made really great progress on the falchion. I had a successful heat treat. I've done a ton of grinding. Most of my time has been spent on grinding and then polishing out the fullers. And I know a lot of people ask us questions all the time on how to do some fullering. Be sure to go back and look on our channel. We have a whole video dedicated to all the different techniques that you can use to create a fuller. So check that out if you're interested. From here, it's a lot more polishing. And we still have all the detail work to do in the notches here on the back of the spine. I still have a lot of polishing 
I have to take the fullers all the way up through 800 grit and then move on to the edges. And then we have to start finishing the guard out and create the pommel and the handle. So there's a lot more to do and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching part 3 of our fashion build for Scalagra. If you haven't already, be sure to check out part 1 and 2. Is best? Then give thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to That Works.